Like every significant sports league, the NFL has had its share of startling controversies. Here are a few of the most astounding events that made news and shocked the league. After Super Bowl 33, Atlanta Falcons safety Eugene Robinson, who was taken into custody on a misdemeanor allegation of soliciting sex from a prostitute, vowed to prove his innocence and apologized to his family and teammates. Robinson reportedly offered a female Miami police undercover cop $40 for oral sex when he was alone in his car. Robinson signed a pledge to appear in court within 30 days, and at 11 p.m., Falcons general manager Harold Richardson released him, according to the police. Robinson said the encounter had no bearing on his performance despite having trouble falling asleep on that particular night. However, Elway's 80-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Rod Smith defeated the Pro Bowler, a play that Robinson said is going to really haunt me. Ray Carruth, a standout wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers at the time, was sentenced to jail in one of the most well-known athlete court cases. He had been involved in a conspiracy to kill his then-girlfriend, who was expecting their kid. Prosecutors said throughout the trial that Watkins and other individuals were recruited by Carruth to kill Adams due to her unwillingness to terminate their pregnant child. After being proven guilty in 2001 of paying Michael Kennedy and Van Brett Watkins to kill Adams, he received a sentence ranging from 18 to 24 years. Watkins, who shot Adams more than once, received a minimum 40-year sentence. The car's driver, Kennedy, was freed in 2011. A month after the incident, Adams passed away. Because of his traumatic delivery following the shooting, her son, Chancellor Lee Adams, was born prematurely and has struggled with the effects of cerebral palsy. Former NFL linebacker Ray Lewis became involved in a high-profile lawsuit that caused waves in the sports world in 2000. Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis was spared a more severe murder sentence because he consented to testify against two other co-defendants in the case before an Atlanta-based court. Two men, Richard Lawler and Jakeith Baker, tragically lost their lives in a battle that broke out at a Super Bowl 34 party in Atlanta. About the confrontation, Lewis and two others were first accused of murder and severe assault. Lewis vigorously maintained his innocence and denied any role in the tragic stabbings throughout the much-publicized trial. Lewis eventually won his case and was cleared of all murder charges. In connection with the case, Lewis did, however, enter a guilty plea to a minor charge of obstruction of justice. He received a 12-month probationary sentence. In addition, the NFL fined him $250,000, which was thought to be the most significant sum ever assessed to an NFL player for a non-substance abuse-related offense. In 1998, while Little was leaving a birthday celebration, he ran over and killed Susan Gutweiler in St. Louis, Missouri, as she was en route to pick up her son after a performance. According to authorities, Rams defensive end Leonard Little was charged and detained on Saturday for operating a vehicle while drunk. He admitted to involuntary manslaughter after driving while intoxicated and causing a deadly collision. His blood alcohol concentration was measured at 0.19%, which was 0.11 points over Missouri's legal limit of 0.08. In June 1998, he admitted guilt to DUI manslaughter in the collision that killed Oakville resident Susan Gutweiler. As a result, he was banned for the first eight games of the 1999 season. Little was given a sentence that included four years of probation, 90 days in the municipal workhouse, and 1,000 hours of community service. In September 2007, Matt Estrella, the video assistant with the Patriots, was seen taping the New York Jets' defensive signals on the field. The Patriots were charged in the 2007 Spygate controversy of recording the defensive signals made by the New York Jets while watching a game from the sidelines. Following the revelation of the tape, New England coach Bill Belichick released a statement saying, I respect the integrity of the game and always have and always will. However, the NFL penalized Belichick $500,000 four days after the event, and the Patriots had to give up a first-round choice. In addition, the team was fined $250,000. After eight years, the NFL was informed by the former general manager of the Indianapolis Colts, Ryan Grigson, that the Patriots could have deflated footballs to gain an advantage over opponents before the AFC Championship game. In 2019, Tom Brady, the quarterback for the New England Patriots, was charged with purposeful deflation of footballs before the Patriots' 45-7 victory over the Indianapolis Colts in the 2014 AFC Championship game. It was said that the strategy improved the quarterback's grasp of the ball. Following an extensive investigation into Deflategate, the NFL penalized the Patriots $1 million. It withdrew two draft selections and suspended Brady for four games for being generally aware of the practice. Nevertheless, New England won the Super Bowl that season.
In the Bountygate controversy, the NFL punished a number of Saints, including defensive captain Jonathan Vilma and head coach Sean Payton, for their alleged participation in a defensive coordinator Greg Williams' run scheme where players were paid incentives to injure opponents. According to reports, Williams gave linebacker Vilma $10,000 if he could take out quarterbacks Brett Favre of the Minnesota Vikings or Kurt Warner of the Arizona Cardinals during a playoff game in 2009. Peyton received a salary suspension for the 2012 campaign. Williams was placed on indefinite leave at the time. In addition to losing eight games while on an unpaid suspension along with Saints general manager Mickey Loomis, three other defensive players received multi-game suspensions. The assistant head coach, Joe Vitt, served a six-game suspension during the 2012 season. In addition to being fined $500,000, the Saints organization lost their 2012 and 2013 second-round draft picks. The linebacker, Jonathan Vilma, was banned for the entire 2012 season in May 2012 after being identified as the ringleader in the controversy. Commissioner Roger Goodell suspended Baltimore Ravens running back Rice for two games in July 2014 after he attacked his fiancée in an Atlantic City elevator. At first, Goodell told reporters that the modest penalty was appropriate since he's been accountable for his actions. He acknowledges that he committed a terrible error by his and our standards and that it is unacceptable. However, the Ravens let Rice loose, and Goodell declared the sentence indefinite when TMZ published a second, more explicit video showing Rice punching out his fiancé. In 2014, Rice's career came to an end, after he was shown on camera beating his now-wife, Janae Palmer, so hard that she smacked her head on a railing and had to be taken out of the elevator. Later in the season, Rice was restored by a court appeal, but he never returned to play professional football. You have yet another Patriot story to people who have appended the suffix gate. On September 11, 2015, in only one quarter following a complaint-filled offseason over the Patriots' alleged infidelity, new accusations regarding the team have surfaced. The Steelers' coaching headsets malfunctioned in their 28-21 defeat to the Pats. While this presumably isn't why no Pittsburgh defender was able to cover Rob Gronkowski, the Pats' suspected habit of taking shortcuts once again dominated post-game talk. The Steelers' coaching headsets were reportedly failing throughout the first half of the game, according to NBC's Michelle Tafoya. Specifically, they picked up a Patriots radio broadcast instead of one another. Following the game, Tomlin provided confirmation of this allegation, stating that his staff's coaching communication devices were essentially inoperable for significant portions of the first half. He also implied that this was common for them at Gillette Stadium. That's always the case, Tomlin responded to a question on the headsets breaking. Here? Yes, I said what I said. The NFL stated that following the game, the communication problem was resolved before the conclusion of the first quarter, which was caused by a stadium power outage made worse by neighboring rainstorms. While coaching headset problems appear pretty prevalent in the NFL, insiders claim it happens far more frequently around the Patriots. There is no proof that the Patriots caused the Steelers' malfunctioning headsets. They likely did nothing improper in actuality. O.J. Simpson, a former NFL player and actor, was found guilty on two murder counts related to the June 12, 1994 slaying of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. On June 13, around 12.10 a.m., Brown and Goldman were discovered fatally murdered outside her condominium in the Brentwood district of Los Angeles. Simpson was a potential suspect in the killings. He failed to turn himself in, and on June 17, 1994, he was the target of a slow-moving pursuit in his buddy Al Cowling's white 1993 Ford Bronco SUV. A live audience of around 95 million people watched the quest. The chase, arrest, and trial were some of the most extensively reported incidents throughout American history. On January 5, 1995, O.J. Simpson appeared with his defense team at the start of the double homicide trial. During his testimony in the June 15, 1995 Los Angeles murder trial, O.J. Simpson attempted to put on a leather glove that is purportedly connected to the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. O.J. Simpson was found not guilty on October 3, 1995. A civil jury held Simpson responsible for the double murder's wrongful death in 1997. Simpson was sentenced to reimburse the Brown and Goldman families for $33.5 million in damages. On April 11, 2024, Simpson's family made his passing known. He had passed away from cancer the day before. These controversies starkly illuminate the problematic interaction of athletes, ethics, and public scrutiny inside the NFL. They have occasionally damaged the league's reputation, but have also sparked vital discussions about responsibility, ethics, and the broader cultural effects of professional sports.